Hello, you are listening to Pulse Bay IT Heroes podcast, a show for MSPs and system administrators. Hello, and welcome to the IT Heroes podcast, uh, brought to you by myself. And today we have David Vega, um, who runs an MSP in Puerto Rico. David, if you want to introduce yourself and give a little background to to yourself. Sure. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, my name is David Vega, as you said. I, I have a business, an MSP business running here in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Uh, we actually have close to 600 uh, now endpoints that we manage, uh, close to uh, 300 customers, and uh, we keep growing. So um, thanks for the invitation. And uh, Absolutely. Delighted to have you, and a lot of our listeners can learn from you um, and your business. So today we're going to be discussing uh, some transitions and um, MSPs going for from a break fix model to a proactive monthly uh, uh, monitoring model um, on the topic. Something you're probably c- uh, comfortable discussing since you've transitioned as well uh, over the last couple of years into this model. Yep, um, you know it, it has been very interesting because. We have been in business now for 11 years. And, uh, you know, my years back in 1995, when I graduated from electrical engineer and and I went uh, to the university, they show you there the old module. You know, you need to be be in front of the computer to do stuff. Um, Nothing about remotely was actually taught, you know, at that time. Um, then I graduate, I go to IBM and I start seeing the remote model, but still, you know, all model, you still need to be in front of the computer. Now, 11 years ago, we started this business in Puerto Rico using that same model because that's, that's what we learned. But uh, a couple of years ago, I transitioned to, uh, to Pulseway and um, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a whole different monster, a whole, whole different world. Um, being so, able to do remote helps a lot, uh, actually takes your costs down and you're able to get more customers with, with less investment, so. Uh, uh, just just a quick question, I'd love to understand, what, what, how did you decide to start an MSP business? What were some of the well, driving factors for you to do that? Well, um, obviously there was a very good need of, uh, of MSPs here. Um, everyone was running wild, as I said. Um, you go to a doctor's office or you go to a lawyer's office uh, and small businesses, and you see a lot of, at that time, Windows XP, for example, and uh, yeah. you, you actually go into the office and you, you see the computers and you're like, okay, there's something wrong. So there's a necessity here. Um, so that's what actually drive me in, um, and, and to do this business and, and convert, convert into an MSP because the, definitely the needs is there. And now that technology is changing, you still, you, you see that need growing up and up. And actually the, the COVID-19 thing, uh, open a whole Pandora box, as I said, everyone was, was like, okay, so we need technology now. So it's, yeah. it's, it's great. It's a great timing to be on the MSP business, uh, not even, not, not only here in Puerto Rico, but I think around the world. Yeah, it, like you said, especially the COVID thing uh, really showed the remote work, you know, companies are scrambling to understand. Okay, so we have remote users. What's the protocol? Um, like how do we protect them? How do we look after their IT, inf- I, you know, I, IT systems while they're remote? Um, and I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. You know, a lot of companies are deciding to stay remote. You know, obviously cost of office and everything else. So this is kind of the new norm. That was not only is it a COVID thing, but it's also what companies are looking to do down the line in the future. Right, and and most of the uh, IT departments of the medium and big companies are actually looking at, as you said, leaving the employees working from home, but then they get a challenge. They say, how do I protect those assets that are no longer physically in my building? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and being an MSP and being able to tell them, okay, listen, I, I'm going to help you. Uh, we're going to install the agent and, and monitor everything from my console uh, with, with my team of people here. Uh, give them give them some uh, relief like okay well we we have the we have the users outside of our business physically but they still monitor and protect it so uh, I think as you said um, it's COVID expanded but it, it was something that was going to happen you know uh, I think the industry was moving that way slow but it was moving that way anyway. And it's just kind of an expediate of the process. So, so, so what were the, some of the challenges of you know, companies going 
did any of your clients go remote uh, during this process? And what were some of the challenges and how did you address them? Well, um, down here in Puerto Rico, we actually did a, a big lockdown. We, we stayed in lockdown for months. Um, it, you know, the government didn't allow you to open anything unless you were a gas station or a supermarket. So, you know, you got a bunch of customers calling in and say, I can't open the office. So I need you to get me a, a way so I can continue to work. Um, so that's where we started implementing VPN and um, remote desktop technology through the VPN. Um, but then they said, okay, well, you got me that solved. But how we're going to monitor them and how we're going to be sure that those computers are, are up to date, how they, uh, we're going to monitor the antivirus, because all that was, was done locally, right? While you were on the building. Yeah. So that's where, loc uh, luckily, I was already using Pulseway for three years before COVID or two years before COVID. So I was, a, well, I was very, um, the team was very knowledgeable about how to use it. And uh, we scramble in on, on one team's call and said, okay, well, we, we got this customer with these needs, what we're going to do. So we went to the Pulseway tool and start looking at it and say, okay, this, this is the way to go. Um, obviously, you know, we, we could not visit the, the people, you know, or the resources because it was not allowed. So pick up the phone, get the person online, say, listen, I'm going to log in remote in, install the agent. Yeah. But then once the agency installed, everything was 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 done. You know, we, we could run antivirus scans, we can run um, updates, everything from the console. And um, it, I'm telling you, it's it, it has been a wild ride, but but we have enjoyed it. Um, e even if you could visit the people door to door, it's not an ideal situation in terms of time, um, having to go to each house maybe to update something. Um, and actually over the, the last 12 months, personally, what we saw is a huge rise in people actually looking for something proactive. And a lot of MSPs I spoke to, um, that, for example, patching, you know, we, we know how unreliable users are in terms of updating their system. Um, they see a, a notification for an update, they'll, they'll click snooze for 24 hours and they'll keep clicking that for, for a year because um, they don't want to affect their workload, not only operating systems, but third party applications. Um, and actually, with the rise in the COVID um, and remote work, we also see is increase in ransomware attacks because it just became easier targets for people. You know, people are on their own network. They're not, they don't have any security practices in place. And people tend to think, you know, a big company is going to get hacked only. You know, they're only aiming after big companies. Uh, but what we're seeing is that they're actually going after small companies just as it doesn't make the news uh, because it's an easier attack for them because they specialize in smaller organizations to penetrate them because they have less defenses. Um, so, and there's still that mentality sometimes, hey, it's not going to happen to us. Um, why would it happen to us? But it does. Um, yeah, and not it, only that, you know, but very, uh, a very detail, you know, that people will not think about is that when we close, for example, um, we didn't have a chance to go to the office and pick up our laptops and go, you know, and go to the, to the house. Because we, you know, they, they couldn't do it. Um, so a lot of people start using their own personal laptops yeah. to work on, 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 on business stuff. So, um, so we, we, we saw a lot of computers with no antivirus, no VPN. They were just trying to remote in with no ports. Uh, computers that were in Windows 7, for example. Um, it, it, was, it was a not secure environment. Uh, and... Um, you know, when we when we when we put the agent on this on, on the computers, we were able to run and scan and tell the IT guys that hey, listen, here's how that computer is. Do you want that user to continue to use that computer? And they were they like, no, 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 no. Okay, we, we will find a way to, to get him a, a, a business laptop. So it it's those those were some of the situations that we that we at least our company saw here with, with the customers. Uh, I mean, that's very dangerous. Um, you have a person using, using their own computer for whoever knows what, um, their own applications and everything else installed that are really not checking anything. Uh, but the, the worst thing is if they get it through a personal email or personal application into that machine, they have access to the business network, then and all of a sudden the whole business gets compromised. Um, so that's absolutely uh, very dangerous. 
it is it is and 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 again um people didn't realize that security is something that they need to be looking for um and and unfortunately i, I have seen a lot of customers and new customers that had come to our business here on, on my msps just because ransomware and and when you go there and you take a look you say well something as something as easy as don't have your shares on your server with everyone full access um you know something like that it's cost it's cost them to be down because the ransomware went straight to that chair and, and do whatever whatever he did so I think um, COVID just uh, uh, raised the awareness of, you know, this is not child's play. Technology is here to stay. You, you, your business runs on technology, so technology needs to be running well. Yeah, it's not, it's no longer like a maybe. You know, technology keeps your business alive. Now, even doctors and like any other small business where we used to look at it now, all their patient information is there. All their booking systems are there. Like if that goes down, not only is it bad for your brand um, that you lost your patients' information and everything else, but any any business, even farming, sometimes I look at like uh, I look at like they have every every tractor's machinery is run on um, technology that's connected to the net um, that performs right. a certain as, action. As simple as uh, a company that that uh, does uh, plastic, for example. You know, your computers went down because of ransomware where you don't, you can't do the plastic roads anymore. Yeah. So it, it, it's not, it's, and, and, and actually, you know, they, they will blame the IT for that, but uh, they actually need to start, the management needs to start thinking that this is necessarily, you know, it's going to affect how that, that company is going to look to your customers because customer calls a company, I need a thousand products and they say well i cannot deliver to the to you on time because i have a ransomware attack you know customer will will go back and say wait is, is this is a reliable company you know they, they should be looking for this so it's it's no longer an internal pro process or internal thing of oh ha let's have all the it stuff ready it's something that customers are seeing as okay, if you have not had a ransomware attack, you are a reliable, com reliable company. So let's do the business with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so everything's just evolving to technology. Every single sector, um, you know, cars are evolving to the fact that they're connected to the internet and have software on them installed to run specific business tasks. It's just and it's expanding so massively that. Um, I'm curious, where, where do you think the Internet of Things is going to take us? Um, what do you think we'll be monitoring in four or five years for your customers? Um, I know we do. I know you currently you look after workstations, you know, servers. Um, what, where do you think this is heading towards? What kind of devices do you think we're going to be looking after uh, and you're going to be looking after for your customers? Well, we um, it, it, it's, it's good that you bring it up because we have a project that we're working on on helping how to monitor patients' health uh, remotely. And mm -hmm. you know, all that is based on Internet of Things. And uh, everything has a connection to the internet and everything has a, an, an OS on the background that's processing everything. So what I think what we as an industry are going to move or moving to an IoT, um, we're going to start monitoring like personal devices, small devices, it's no longer be a server or a computer, just only that. It's going to be probably phones, it's probably um, uh, measurement units, thermometers, everything that connects to the internet and has an access, uh, we're going to start monitoring those. Um, it, again, I, I think we are on an exciting time where everything is going to be internet connected and how I see it is as long as they are connected and pacing data, uh, we get a chance of a business. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the devices are multiplying by thousands, I think, every month or so. So it's, well, it's going to be exciting. Well, it used to be like one or two devices per user. Now you have four or five devices per users. And then and the office devices you have, you know, you have cameras, you have everything else, um, network devices on top of that, um, cloud applications as well as a big one um so and then like you said like devices and, and users you know it could be a your know, hospital and you're tracking the the health score of a patient um and so on biometrics and everything else um could be you know where it's evolving 
you know, it's just going towards more and more devices that are going to be critical and also potentially vulnerable. Um, so it's definitely an interesting and how it's speeding up is very interesting at the moment. And it's going to be fun yeah. to see how it plays out down the line. Yeah, and everything, you know, everything these days comes with Wi-Fi connectivity. So as long as it's connected to the network and passing data, um, we got a chance to monitor. And, um, and, and I think the need for monitoring and be sure that those devices comply with a policy, for example, it's, it's, it's going to go up. And, um, and, and I think we, we are on an exciting time because it's, it's going to be a lot of business for MSPs. Absolutely. It's, a, it's an exciting time. Um, is there anything that you miss uh, from the old break fix model? Um, I know it's a bit simpler of times. Yeah, it's, you know, before it was just uh, look for the hardware and how the hardware works and, uh, you know, power supply goes down um, and, you, and you got more user interaction on, on the old times, you know, um, some, sometimes sometime breaks, you, you need to pick up the car and go there and, and, uh, and, and try to fix it locally um, so you, the, the customer will see you. Um, I think a challenge that we as MSPs are, are seeing this, this times is with the old model, the customer will see you working and do things. With the new model, you need to be a little bit more proactive to show the customer that you're doing something, okay? Yeah. Um, to do preventive maintenance, for example, in the past, well, you need to pick up the car, go to the customer side and, and physically be there and the customer will see you doing the upgrades, doing the changes, doing all that stuff. Now everything happens on, on the background and um, unless you show them on a report or an email or even a call, say, listen, you know, I'm, I'm doing this. Um, this is the report. This, this is how your computer is behaving. You need to change the hard drive. Um, it, it's, it's a little bit harder for us to, to show the customer that we're doing something. I, I, I think that's, that's, that's what I miss the old the model because, you know, be, be honest with me, probably the customers on, until the computer doesn't break, they think that we're not doing anything, right? Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> if, if, it, if everything's working perfect, then it doesn't look like you're doing anything, even though, um, you're doing so much more because you're being proactive about it. But I mean, we would say with automation in place now, it kind of reduces the workload, right? Um, I assume a little oh, yeah. bit. There's, um, no so, way, there's no way I can do 500 endpoints with a staff of 10 people, which is yeah. what, what I'm doing right now, you know, with, with, without uh, automation or monitoring or remote or IMM, there's no way. So it, 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 it's a blessing. Um, so is, is there time to still maybe organize and what is, what is the best approach to, you know, everything's being done in the background. So it's maybe sending reports to your clients. Um, but do you still go on site to meet with the, with the owner of the business to kind of once a month to discuss things or it's kind of completely hands off at the, um, just based through communication, through email or phone call at the moment? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a difficult question because the COVID, you know, we need to remember yeah. we have a COVID, right? Um, but now, instead of going every month, um, I'm actually going every three months. Um, it's, I want to see the customer, but I really want to maintain the, the, the COVID and, and, and you know, being a part a little bit. But uh, my plan uh, has been to you know, work with them every three months personally. Um, but every month I give them a call and say, hey, listen, you know, I just want to see how things are going. But one thing that I'm really doing right now that uh, it's really helping me connect with the customers is not only send them a report because everyone can send a report, but is taking the time to read the report and do recommendations on that email that the reporting I'm sending. Um, basically it's just taking that all technical stuff in the report uh, and, and bringing it to their level. And what I have seen is that when I send that report with that explanation, I get calls from them back. Hey, I got your email. Um, excellent. So let's go ahead and change the hard drive. Or let or, or can you explain me a little bit why we what why the high memory usage is impacting my computer? So it's 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 bringing them into the game of uh, understanding a little bit what's happening and you get the approvals to do stuff faster. You know, it's not, it's not the same that I just blindly 
call a customer and say, your hard drive needs to be changed. Well, you know, if he does yeah. a little bit, he, he will, it's not going to go for him. So yeah. that's need what an I'm explanation. doing. Yeah, you need to get into details and explain the report. Um, uh, a lot of people maybe send reports and, you know, the customer might not understand what, you, what this report is telling them unless we kind of highlight, you know, here's, here's the highlights from the report. Here's the things we notice and here's why we need to do that. Um, yeah, so I create a, I create a template for that, for all my, for, you know, for all the technicians to, to look at or, or to use. And, 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 you know, even the executive summary from Postway, um, you know, it's supposed to be simple, right? But still you need to take that to their level. And, you know, honestly, if you do that, at least, I can say it by, 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 by my experience, it, ha it has helped me a lot um, to engage the customer, basically. On the, well, on well, the that's the thing. It, it might be simple for us to understand, not necessarily simple for everyone to understand. So, um, And there's always some sort of a misconception. You're like, oh, well, I understand it, so I'll send it. You know, Again, that doesn't mean the end user will understand it. Some people might not be as technical. Um, so it's okay to explain things and a little bit more information. Um, so they get a good understanding of it. Um, so how often would you send the reports to your customers? We actually do it uh, every month. We have a schedule, uh, autom automatic schedule on our system that every first day of the, uh, of the month generates mm -hmm. a report, send it to the, cut to the technician who is assigned to that customer. And then the technicians between the day one and day three, you know, it depends because, you know, not sometimes day one, it's a Saturday or a Sunday, right? So the first day, the first business day of that month, re review it, make the notes, send the email. So we're doing that monthly, um, at least the scheduling reporting. And in, in terms of, you know, it's all about efficiency a lot of the time. You know, it's important to, you know, save time and reduce the amount of work you put, you put into, not, not necessarily reducing the quality, maintaining the high quality, but removing some of the burden away. And we see that happen more and more so through automation, auto remediation. Uh, but do you see this going even further um, in towards more AI driven solution where, you know, it will analyze for you uh, what's happening and it'll suggest an action. Um, I assume it'll be a long time before we have an AI that it will trust to make a, an action without the approval. Uh, but, you know, you know, personally, internally, we'll, you know, we've been discussing this for some time is creating an environment where we can analyze the data and send suggestions of what actions to take with that notification. Uh, where do you see that whole concept going in terms of automation in AI and big data learning of what's happening with infrastructure? Well, it's... Uh... I see it as a two-side coin, and let me explain why. Um, for us, the technique, the technician part, um, you know, AI, you need to teach AI, right? You need to tell the AI how, how to behave. And uh, we understand that. And, and you know, maybe um, the customer is running low on a, on a hard drive, but let's, let's create an AI that empty the 10 box, you know, the 10 folder, for example, or, you know, or, or do things like that. Um, what I'm looking at is if the customer doesn't know that you're doing it, um, it's going to fly on the, on the, on the table and, and he's going to think that you're not doing anything. Um, that's just my take, right? I think AI is great, but um, there's, there's always to be an interaction, a human interaction at least to explain the customer, hey, you, by the way, you have never had this issue, but it's because we're doing this, this, and this, and it's doing automatically. Um, you know, I like AI. I, I, just, uh, I just think that business-wise, um, if you don't interact with the customer or the customer doesn't know that you're doing something, uh, it, it could at the end hurt you because it, it, it could say, well, you're not doing anything here. You have been here for a year. Nothing has happened. Um, I don't need you anymore. We know yeah. we know it's not true, right? But I'm just seeing it from the from the business side of the house. Yeah, you know, how do you convey value? You know, that you're actually I mean like I mean, this is the point we talked about before is you know, when things are working great, nobody says anything, you know. Um it looks like nothing is being done, but in fact a lot is being done to, to make sure everything is working well. Um and oftentimes, you know, part of that is convincing you know, explaining it to, to the client, you know, this is a proactive approach. We're preventing problems, not just showing up on site when something happens. 
Um, it's overall better for your uptime, better for your business. It's more secure for your business. You know, um, is there still a struggle uh, with new clients? Maybe maybe that's changing. So when you're talking to a new client that's potentially looking for the service, um, to sell them proactive approach rather than we'll fix things when something goes wrong. Well, um, you know, the easier customers are the ones that they have an issue, they call you, you fix it, and you show them right away what you can do. Um, you know, as we were talking before this, um, I had a customer have a, a, a ransomware attack. We went in, we fixed it, he's happy. And I was able to show them right away what, what I can do by monitoring, you know, install the agents and, and show them the, the dashboard right there and say, hey, you know, this is what I can do for you. So, so that those new customers that you know, those kind of customer type of customers are easy. Um, for customers that have never seen you work before, that are what I call the, the blind customers that, that you're just trying to get into their business. Um, it's uh, what I, the, the technique, the technique, the technique that I use is, well, okay, um, this is an investment that you're doing. Okay, the, you're, you're, we're going to monitoring your systems. Um, it's not an expense, it's an investment because if your computer goes down for a, for a hard drive uh, crash, for example, then you will have that secretary doing nothing there. You're paying, you're paying that resource for per hour for doing nothing. You got your business down. You need to put a, a, a price or, or, or a number on how much you're losing, right? Just just for one day. Yeah. So my pricing is always lower than having a secretary or or or, or a resource down for a day, and uh, that has been helping me get the message that proactive pays. You know, it pays you back. It's an investment. Having a server down for a day, you will lose a whole production day. How much do you lose of not being able to sell for a day? Yeah. Oh, well, you're right, fifty thousand dollars. Well, you know, I'm charging you a lot less uh, a month for that, and you you will have your operation running, and you will not have that uh, that um, you know that situation where you're going to lose. Uh, um, a, a, a computer or or, or, or or some sales so that, that's the approach but you're right it's it's difficult to to get the message that proactive space but as long as you tell them and you go to the, through that route and say hey we're monitoring this we are going to tell you before um, it crash um, we're going to be looking at it um, and then you put a price next to it it's a, it helps in context absolutely and yeah and that's it when it's explained you know, ransomware and a you know attack you know a hack or something is 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 a one case scenario right um it happens and that's you know that's obviously your business is down for days for weeks for how long there's a lot of man hours to restart everything it costs you hundreds of thousands occasionally um to restart there's a couple of companies in the u.s recently in the news that that ransomware didn't pay it <coughs> but they paid a million to restart everything and to get everything back in order and cost them a fortune. Uh, but it's not only that. And like you said, it's, you know, what if your user goes down or what if your, um, your, your sales manager goes down and you can't operate and you lose, you know, 10 hours in the day that you were going to pay him. And also the, the work he was going to put into closing deals, for example, how much is that going to cost your business? You know, it's a lot, it's a lot more than it would cost to proactively monitor things. And then, your servers goes down or you're, you have a, you, maybe you have online transactions or you have production companies. Um, you can't get any clients for the day. How much is that costing in revenue? And le- relatively speaking, you know, it's a, a cost of proactive management is nothing compared to the cost. It, it, it can be when things go wrong, um, whether it's just per user for the, you know, for your operations or being hacked and attacked. Well, and, and, and it's it's interesting. Some of my new customers that I go and visit, they, they just never think that something's going to go wrong. You know, they have been operating for two years with the same computer. You know, oh, that computer has never gone wrong. So, well, you know, um, I just run and scan on your computer and look, it, it still have updates to do. Your hard drive is, it's, it's, it's given uh, errors. You're, you're running low memory on, on a lot of, 
places here, you know, a lot, lot of timings. And, and that opens, opens the faith, you know, opens to them the possibility that, oh, something could go wrong. And, and that's where they start thinking on it. But it, again, it's, uh, it, it's, it's difficult because people don't put a pricing on proactive. Um, they, they, they are reactive. And a, and a funny story, actually, I was speaking to an MSB in Australia um, who had customers um, who was hacked twice before they decided to put something in place to protect them. Um, so they, they got ransomware system installed twice. Um, and they're like, OK, maybe we should start thinking about backup. Um, <laughs> and I'm, you know, maybe. Thinking, you know, maybe we should, you know, because you, a lot of people think, you know, I was hacked once. It's not going to happen again. Well, in, in fact, that you're more likely to get hacked again because there's no morality there. Uh, once they have the information, they can sell it to somebody else to hack it. Uh, they know your vulnerabilities. Um, so it's, you know, it's not something you need to think about. And, any, and regardless what kind of small business you are, you need your IT taken care of. Um, it's a necessity and you cannot operate an assumption thinking it's not going to happen to me. We're too small or nobody's going to find us. They're going to find you. Um, something's going to wrong. Um, you're going to have issues. You're going to have downtime. It's going to cost your business a lot of money. Um, it's not no longer of maybe should I, you definitely should. Um, every business should have, um, regardless of what type of business should have their IT infrastructure looked after um, properly. Yeah, and one thing that I always stress is, you know, you go to customers and say, oh yeah, I have a backup system. So, well, let, let's go ahead and, and take a look at the logs. Oh, look at this, it has not done backup in months. You know, yeah. that's as simple as monitoring the backup of your customers could take you a long way because um, you can have the best backup in the world, but if you, it doesn't, if it has not been doing backup, <laughs> then it's not working. A, a lot of time what they do is, oh, we'll just get backup and let's set it running and then they just don't check it ever again um, until they need backup again and they're looking and realizing, okay, things weren't working, some new systems weren't enrolled because you have new systems joining the network all the time, systems leaving the network. Um, and that constantly needs to be updated with policies and everything else. And new system joins network needs to be policies need to be added to it and backups in place. Um, and not only that, it's also like compliance is going crazy as well. You know, companies are getting required to have compliance of backup for the last you know twelve months or something that they could show uh, some data for the last twelve months. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know the backups the back the, the backup thing has has changed a, a lot from oh yeah let's do a backup once a month to we need to run backups two or three times a day <laughs> so yeah. um so we we need to stress the customers that you know it's 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 very important now that, that the ransomware is there and, and and also for business continuity if something happens doesn't doesn't need to be a virus you know, and you, you lose your service for any reason, you need to be able to back to, to back out and restore. Um, so it, it, I think IT is becoming, it's trans, transforming from an, uh, uh, an expense to an investment. I, I think you, you share uh, that idea with me because now it, it's, it's, it's not a necessity. It's, you, know, you need to have it running. It needs to run well so your business runs well. Yeah, uh, because, you know, a lot of businesses won't be able to operate without IT. It's like you said, it's it's part of everything and it's it's a critical thing and spend is going up. People are understanding this, you know, and hopefully people catch up to you a lot quicker. Some companies are catching up a lot quicker than others, uh, but what keeps your business ticking and running? Um, so it's like, like we discussed, it's not a, uh, maybe I'll have it. You definitely should invest into it. Um, and especially as things move, progress and move on and, um, it's, it's something you need to have in place and well organized. Um, so sure. what other trends, just quickly, what other trends are you seeing at the moment? Um, any, well, anything? you know, everything's moving to IoT these days. Everything's moving, it's moving to, uh, to connecting. Um, I think companies are thinking more or on, on the, what, what disaster recovery is and, 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 you know, DR. Everyone talks about DR, DR, but they don't, they don't have a clue what a DR is, you know, um, uh, down here in Puerto Rico, for example, you probably heard about uh, Hurricane Maria um, a couple of years ago. You know, we we spend uh, months without power, 
I'm telling you months. And um, yeah, people realize that, oh, you know, I need my computer to be running to run my business. So now disaster recovery and, um, and not only disaster recovery, but business continuity, that's the word I was looking for. It's, 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 getting, it's getting on the ears of the customers. Uh, you need to be able to, if your whole system goes down, to be able to be running on another place or from another location on, on time's moment so your business doesn't get hurt. Um, I think uh, there, there's going to be a lot of VR and, and BC business continuity um, business go, going on uh, for the MSPs. Uh, how, how do you find cloud infrastructure? Um, do you think that's something that's grown as well? monitoring different type of cloud applications, cloud infrastructure? Well, everything is moving to the cloud these days. Um, uh, it all depends on, on, on the customers. I, I still have customers down here that after Maria, were, we didn't have internet for months. <laughs> um, they were glad that they had the, their things in house, right? We can run it with a, with a generator, but uh, everything is moving to the cloud and um, you know, cloud, it's just another computer, another person's computer. That's, that's how I see it. So uh, you need to keep an eye on that, keep an eye on, on the storage. Um, so I think MSPs will have another section to go to grow in, uh, which, is, which is the cloud monitoring. You know, how's your OneDrive, your Google uh, Drive's working, um, you know, the, how the policies for storage, as, as you said, you know, companies are, are saying, well, you need to store things for 12 years. Well, you need to manage that storage, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, so and, and everyone is using cloud-based technology these days. You know, Office 365 is coming on. Um, COVID held that to grow. So there is there's a niche there that I think MSPs maybe have not think about it. Uh, and it's great that you brought it in. It, it, it's something that we need to start thinking how we're going to monitor and manage that's, that's the, you know, those systems for the customers. You know, set them up appropriately. You know, it, it's, it can be like, it, it's like even, you know, servers in a cloud, you might have stored, you know, critical applications, uh, you know, personally, you know, Pulseway, you know, we stored in, on servers, databases, and so on. But we have load balancers, for example, that a multi-tenant that go from one server to the next. So if one server goes down, we have about six, seven other servers that will pick up the pace that once that server goes down, the application is running again. So there's no downtime for our customers. But it's the same for any sort of business. Um, if they have critical applications, so maybe there's software they're selling to their clients or what they're running on is having that uh, good cloud strategy and proactively monitoring that as well. Yeah, and, and and you know some of the customers like go to uh, to a, a cloud-based um, provider and, and they just install their their Windows server there. Well, they need to understand that that server maybe it's not physical to you, but you, it's on the internet. People could get to it, so you still need to monitor it. Not not because it is not physical in your office. You can just lay back and say, oh, okay, it's going to always be there. Um, it, it, you really need to keep an eye too on those. And, and I think that's where, that's where I was saying that it's a, it's a good niche for uh, MSPs to get in and, and, and get more business through there. Absolutely. Um, and is there any kind of final advice you'd give to MSPs who are looking to become more profitable and deliver a better service, um, have a more efficient business and have better profit margins? Um, what, what would be some of your advice to that? Well, um, you know, definitely we need to start moving from the old way to manage systems to the new way. Uh, I, I think that's, that, that's, that's the first step. Uh, using tools like Pulseway definitely help you to do more with, le with less resources. You know, I was saying that there's no way I can manage 500 endpoints with, with the stuff that I have with, without having a tool like Pulseway. Um, don't lose, don't lose touch with your customers. You know, don't just set and forget and, 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 and do reports just, just to like, you know, maybe, maybe once every three months, pick up the call and say, hey, customer, I'm here. Uh, but definitely move and start looking at automation, tools like Pulseway, and, uh, and try to do things more effectively, like uh, automatic patching, because 
you know, it, maybe it, took, it can take you 10 minutes to patch a machine, but if you then, if you have a hundred machines, then, you know, that's, that's a thousand minutes, right? So you don't have that. Um, so, so try, try to go that way, but, but honestly, don't, don't do, don't try to do things so automatically that the customer doesn't know that you're there. Yeah, that's, that's, I, I think that's the communication is always key. And I, I think that, you know, people should take away, it applies to a lot of jobs anyone does, you know, if you can communicate well, what you're doing and what value you're bringing in, effectively, you don't assume they understand what you're doing. Um, and sometimes you see, you know, I, I see quite often with, you know, maybe system administrators who were previously at an MSP, then maybe go to site, start their own MSP. And sometimes they lack uh, that understanding initially to get going as to, you know, here's how to run a business and here's how to communicate value. And because it's not just providing a service, but it's, um, it's a business as well. Um, there's costs involved with it and um, having, you know, low overhead and um, good profit margins and all these things that go into it. It's not, you know, I'm just going to start an MSP. I'm going to just provide IT services. I'm not going to think about costs and anything else. Um, you know, because <laughs> everyone thinks they're an expert. And then they realize, okay, quickly, I'm not being profitable uh, or I'm spending too much and it's costing me money. And, I, and I've had conversations where, you know, I'm thinking about starting an MSP, I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm just going to resell your license to the customer to do their own work, you know. Um, and uh, I get so confused by it um, when somebody says, well, I'm like, well, how are you making money and how are you, you know, providing a service? You know, why don't, you know, that's not the... And then oftentimes you need to explain it to people. Um, you know, this is this is how much you should charge to be profitable. And, you know, this is how this is the service you should provide. And so you should communicate. And um, you're often so we, we, you know, we as we as technicians sometimes get too into the technical part that we forget that, and this this could be a joke, but we forget that uh, a person is actually the one who signs up the check. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo. so, so we need the to server convince. the server doesn't write the check unfortunately right so we still need to, to convince the folks that have the money that have it's running their business to see the value of what we're bringing um and and, and again I, i'm not saying don't go i ai don't go automatic stuff just you know those, those are great and it, it's going to help us msps to continue to grow because it's just a true we cannot grow without these tools i'm just saying don't don't just don't lose uh touch with your customers because he's the one who is going to give you more business if you keep you know communicate with it I, I, yeah I, th I think with that the a good strategy and the ai stuff like you know it'll do stuff for you it'll still need approval from the technician whether this is the right step to take or not and maybe have an automated communication which will go into the report here's one of the problems that was fixed um for you and this is this was done at two o'clock in the morning or something you know uh because they're still set up involved in this it's not like you know automation gets automatically set up and everything's running there's you need to create those tasks you need to create those workflows you need to create all of that and then track it is it working is it not working and then tweak it and uh, and improve it so automation is reducing workload but it requires expertise and skills to set up um not everyone can do that yeah, you, you're right on that one i had a i had a professor in university that said you know computers are dumb garbage in garbage out you know so it, it's all you you need to tell the computer to do things right um yeah. and and you're right you're right it, it, it's not only the reports we need to put some uh some icing on, on those reports so people can understand them and, and the automation stuff, um, and this is often enough, I, I talk to an MSP maybe sometimes, and I, well, have you tried automating some things? Well, no, I'm too busy, I don't have time, uh, which, is, which is a catch, you know, I'm too busy, but I'll, you know, I, I could be less busy kind of thing. Um, do you think it's worthwhile to invest in automating things? Yeah, it, it does. It does. And I can tell you from, from, uh, from first hand, I was one of those guys that that uh, I, I didn't implement, for example, Pulseway for a long time because I didn't have time to sit down and, and, and figure figure what, what Pulseway was going to do for me on for our business. So I actually, you know, took a week and started reading and 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 I 
at, at that time, I thought that, listen, you know, if we spend, and again, it's not spending, it's investing. So yeah. you're investing that day. Okay, you're not, not, not attending customers that day, but you're, if you take those, those eight hours and you invest it on doing things automatically, uh, then you will not, you will recover hours from your work because you now, you don't need to do the things manually, you know, automatic, aut automation will do it for you. So at the end, it's an investment, you know, don't, don't, don't see it as an I spend, oh, I, I'm not, I'm not attending customers and losing business. You know, it's the, it's the other way. It will, you spend, you invest time on automation, it will give you time so you can grow your business in other areas. Yeah. Now, I, I can still see some people, uh, for example, Windows patching, uh, they have 200 machines, they'll remote into each single machine to check if there's a patch and then install, <laughs> install the patch individually. And it's like, well, it takes me about, you know, 12, 13 hours or so to do all the machines over the space of the week. Um, so it's definitely not a time well spent because there's more priority things you could be doing and you can offload some of that. And also mistakes you can make, you know, um, if you do it individually, you might miss something, you know, there's user errors sometimes as well. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, you need to put some, uh, some price on, on the amount of time that you invest into a customer. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and if you can lower that, you know, that cost of how much it costs you to attend that customer, that at the end, it, it will, it will go positive on your side. Well, that, in, in a lot of MSPs need to, you know, start thinking about it. it's a business and uh, you need to be profitable and efficient and like anything else. Well, you know, thank you so much, David, for your time. It was a pleasure um, talking to you. And uh, I appreciate that you bring me in and, uh, uh, and you know, uh, it, it's always good to, to be able to help other MSPs because um, at the end, you know, we're a family. And, uh, and I think we all need to take care of each other. So I appreciate the opportunity and thanks for letting me, it let me do it. A pleasure listening and learning. So hopefully all our listeners will find it uh, super useful as, as I did. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care.